How are you? Good. How are you doing? Very good. Hi, Pastor Mates. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Mr. Bonds, how are you today? Very good. How are you, sir? Good, good. You got new do? Just work do. Hi, everyone. Uh, we'll get started in a minute. Uh, give folks a chance to sign on. Deep sent your email last night. Sorry, Tony, I, I didn't catch on that one. I said, Chief, I did. Oh. I sent them an email last night. Just let me know, okay? okay I'm sorry, Tony. Yep. What's up, Mike? There we go. I always forget to unmute it. How are you, sir? Good. How's Gabe doing? He's doing well. He's uh, looking forward to spring uh, track. Hopefully, he'll be able to uh, be ready to go by the time that comes around. All right. Senior, right? Yep. All right. Uh, so it's 4.02. Uh, if it's okay with everybody, I think all of our commissioners are here. And so I, I'd like to officially call the Kingston Police Commission meeting to order at 4.02 p.m. on February 17th, uh, 2021. Um, just a reminder, uh, this meeting uh, is being recorded uh, and is uh, will be posted on our City of Kingston website. Uh, as well as our City of Kingston YouTube channel. Um, you can find details um, by clicking on the calendar, um, as well as visiting our Kingston uh, Police Commission page. And so um, with that, we're gonna do a roll call uh, to just uh, for the record, uh, Commissioner uh, Dejeanette is here, uh, Commissioner Jordan, uh, Commissioner Bowden and Commissioner Mapes are all here. 
our liaison uh, to the Common Council, Alderman of the Sixth Ward, Tony Davis is here. And we'd like to also thank the Chief and Lieutenant Bonds uh, for being with us this evening. Um, and so first, um, I'd like to just uh, uh, turn it over to our Secretary, um, Minya, uh, for any uh, public comments um, that uh, have come in uh, since last month. Hey everybody, um, so we had one um, communication that was a complaint, an official complaint filed. And um, can everyone hear me okay? Just wanna make sure, yeah. okay. Um, so this complaint came in uh, from Amy Shapiro who lives in Kingston, New York. She's also a um, Re-Envision Safety Task Force member. And this wasn't directed at a particular officer. Um, it was uh, in regards to an incident that happened when she posted a comment on the KPD Facebook page in regards to a post. And it was in regards to the language used on the post. And she was um, then uh, subsequently blocked from the page and her comment was removed. And um, this was what she wanted to call attention to us. And, and in fact, it, it, this is something we'll discuss later. It brought attention to the, uh, the fact that there is actually no social media policy. And there are other cities that do have social media policies for the police department. And it's something we should discuss um, as soon as possible um, as that there's no set standard of, of who gets removed or whose comments stay. And so that's the gist of the complaint and that will be in public record um, for people to review. And we will also be discussing this in executive session with Amy. Great. Um, thank you very much, Minya. Um, if I would like to move on uh, to see if there are any other public comments um, or speakers this evening. Um, I don't believe we have any, um, but I just wanted to double check. All right. Um, Next, I'd like to take a motion to uh, approve uh, the minutes from our last meeting. Um, we actually had, um, I believe, two meetings last month, um, our regular scheduled meeting, uh, as well as a special meeting where we dealt with policies um, related to the police commission. And so um, can I have actually uh, a motion to approve both of those um, minutes? And again, all of these videos um, of our meetings are posted um, on the City of Kingston website for folks to be able to uh, look back on um, that reflect uh, what happened during those meetings. So can I have a motion to approve those? I'll I'll move. Move. All right, thank you, Commissioner Mapes, uh, seconded by Dejeanette. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Um, so up next, we'll have uh, communications uh, from the chief. Do you have anything for us, chief? Well, at this time, no, I think uh, at some point we'll probably be discussing the civil service plan announcement. Is that, uh, yeah, you can, if you want, you can do that as part of your report of the chief. We can roll right into that. We'll roll right into that then, that's perfect. And uh, with that, I'm gonna turn that right over to our uh, recruiting efforts. Uh, Lieutenant Mike Bonds, uh, Mike's been spearheading for the last few years. Uh, the uh, recruitment efforts to try to get uh, applications and enrollment in the testing procedures. And uh, a few years ago, we, we changed over to having a, uh, uh, in addition to the civil service test, we kind of switched around and have the uh, physical fitness exam first, but the application process still has to take place. So Mike, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that. Um, just just kind of talk the timelines and the, the informational sessions and so on. Yes, sir. So Mike before you go, um, just to, to kind of preface this is the, the fact that, you know, we um, often have, um, you know, the need for new civil service lists, uh, either they've either aged out uh, the, the list itself, or um, we end up going through the list um, and uh, need to uh, have the list updated. And so uh, this is a, also a part of our efforts here in the police department, uh, because we have had a lot of retiree retirements, as we've discussed, and we've been backfilling a lot of those vacancies. And so um, we've been going through the lists a, a lot faster than uh, normal. And so uh, there is, um, and we expect that there will be additional openings uh, in the department. And so um, while uh, the work that we're doing right now is not necessarily going to um, allow us to say fill a position immediately off of this new effort, um, because it does take some time to have these tests graded and certified uh, lists be available to us. Uh, it is a, it's a really important part of the process to be able to continually have 
um, a, a civil service list to be able to choose from uh, so that our hiring process isn't hindered. And so I want to thank, you know, you, Mike, and, and the chief for being able to, um, you know, kind of keep this process going so that when we get to our hiring, um, that we have um, you know, good quality, um, you know, and, and diverse lists of candidates to, to choose from. So uh, now you can go, but thanks for letting me do that, uh, that, uh, that preface to that. Absolutely. The, uh, so this year, kind of unique, we're giving a police entrance exam in May. Well, we're not, the state is offering it in May, and we're electing to uh, participate in that statewide exam. Uh, generally, it's been in the fall in the past. This is the first entrance exam I'm aware of uh, coming in the spring. Uh, in, in speaking with uh, civil service, it appears that we may be one of the few agencies, certainly in our region, that are offering a test at this time. So it's kind of hopeful that, you know, we can draw in, you know, a, a good number of candidates because we're the only test occurring right now. So we're hoping that that'll, uh, that'll help us bring in some candidates. Uh, but to that effort, uh, the test is May 15th. And, and leading up to that, what we're going to be doing is on March 3rd, we're going to hold an information session. Uh, to talk about the job, to talk about the City of Kingston Police Department, about employment, about the requirements, about the training. And uh, we, we did this with the, last, uh, with the last test we had, and it seemed pretty helpful. Uh, we can give applicants a good idea of exactly what's expected of them, uh, both for the physical agility and the written exam. So the uh, information session, again, will be Wednesday, March 3rd. We'll post uh, on the Facebook page uh, information about how to sign up for that as it gets nearer. The application deadline is March 10th. So, so applicants interested need to get their applications into civil service by March 10th. On Saturday, April 10th, we'll be holding the physical agility portion of the exam. And I just wanted to get that date out there as soon as possible. So those interested know uh, to start practicing for that exam. And again, if people sign up on the third for the information session, we'll go very specifically over what that exam looks like and, and how it gets graded. And then on Wednesday, April 21st, we'll be doing an exam preparation session. So those uh, candidates that have applied, that have passed the physical agility exam and are anticipating sitting for the written exam on May 15th, uh, will offer a exam preparation session as to what the civil service exam looks like, give them some strategies and discuss how to, uh, how to be successful on the written portion of the exam. Uh, we did that in 2019 as well, um, kind of on this same timeline and I'm, pretty certain everybody that attended that information session passed the exam. So it seemed to be a pretty, uh, a pretty successful model. And then on Saturday, April 15th will be the written exam. Well, if uh, past uh, performance is any indication of the future, my guess is we'll probably see those results around August, um, uh, possibly uh, as late as September. But between the list getting certified and, and everything else that happens, we'll hopefully we'll get um, a, a September timeline to get that new list up and running. And just to clarify, you know, with COVID and the restrictions that we have, um, I believe many of these sessions are going to be kind of remote uh, or virtual um, yes. during the time period. Yes, sir. The information session will be remote. We'll, we'll put the link up for that. The physical agility won't be. Uh, we do take a, you know, we've been doing it between the police academy and, and hiring. We have some pretty good systems and protocols in place to do that safely. Uh, we space out the candidates. We make sure we're using all the proper COVID, COVID protocols uh, to run that safely. That will have to be in person, but everything else will pretty much be remote. Um, and then just in an effort to, to promote this a, a bit, uh, if you haven't seen it yet or if you know people interested, we put the announcement out on the Facebook page. Uh, we also shared it on the local police academy page. And uh, in my role at the academy, I have access to uh, you know, a number of former students. So I've gone back to probably the past five years, so probably 10 academy classes, and put the announcement out on an email distribution list to all of the former recruits that we've had at the, uh, at the academy for the past four or five years. So uh, that, that's where we're at so far with, with that recruitment effort. And, and certainly, hopefully people view this and, and people get talking about it and we get as many people out there as we can, uh, particularly people from the community to come out and take that exam. Great. Does anyone have any questions um, about this process um, while Lieutenant Bonds is uh, here um, with us? Okay, all right, um, well, thank you. Mike for that. Uh, Chief, uh, is there anything else that you would like to share um, uh, that you're working on with us? Uh, no, at this time we, uh, we're we moving forward with a uh, in-service schedule that's kind of unique because of COVID. Um, uh, training wise, we're trying to get all of the accreditation requirements out of the way initially. 
but we are running into some staffing uh, scheduling time frames, right, Mike? Um, at this point, we're, we're trying to work around them and see, but ideally the, the, the 21 hours that accreditation requires for us, we're trying to get done early on. Uh, certainly as, as you've seen with the re-envisioning task force report, uh, there may be, and there should, probably should be, quite a bit of training coming our way when it comes to crisis intervention and, and so on. So we're trying to make sure we get the, the, necess the necessary ones in order to meet accreditation standards out of the way first, and then we can fill the rest of the year and with the remainder of it, especially with the spring schedule. Uh, Mike, do you want to talk about that a little bit as far as the schedule? Or? Yeah, we, we should be starting the, the in-service uh, March 23rd. Uh, it'll take us nine weeks uh, to uh, to get through the in-service. We do a, a joint in-service training with the town of Ulster Police. They have the same requirements as a um, accredited agency, and that way we can share in resources with instructors and such to uh, make it a little more uh, palatable for everybody's schedules. But we're hoping to get those those mandatory four training topics, the uh, firearms use of force, legal updates, and, and right to know stuff all done in that first cycle so that once the second cycle comes around, you know, if we're able to do that on our normal schedule, we'll be able to use that training session to address some of the uh, concerns that came out of the task force report. Alderman Davis. Uh, Lieutenant Bonds, can you just, you said use of force, firearm discharge, what were the other two? So firearms training and qualification, uh, use of force, legal updates, and right to know. Uh, those four are mandated by the New York State Accreditation uh, Council to the program. So they will be, uh, you know, addressed in our first cycle. And then other, other things we're looking at for the year uh, at some point will be we have to get in like our first aid and CPR and, and a couple other uh, mandatory trainings. But those aren't necessarily accreditation needs. They're, they're other needs. Uh, but we'll get those first ones in the first cycle. March 23rd, you say, right? Mar March 23rd through... May 6th, I believe, whatever nine weeks takes us from, from March 23rd. All right. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Okay. Um, good. And so moving on then uh, for unfinished business, I didn't have any other unfinished business um, um, other than just to um, thank the department um, for putting together um, the remaining policies that uh, we had a big policy session um, the last time. Um, I think a week or two ago, um, the chief sent out um, a kind of a policy matrix as well as kind of the entire policy handbook. And so um, I don't know if everyone's had a chance to breeze through that um, yet, and, or if we would like to put that on as a kind of an agenda item next time uh, to be able to kind of uh, give our, uh, you know, answer any questions that we may have and then uh, approve those policies. And so I would maybe suggest that uh, we put that on our radar so that next month, um, you know, we can um, approve the rest of those policies. Um, but that was at least one unfinished business item from last time that I just wanted to kind of um, put back on everybody's radar, if that's okay. Um, okay, uh, and so uh, new business, um, we had um, uh, an item uh, that Commissioner Dejanet reminded us about uh, last fall. Um, we um, worked with Lieutenant Bonds to uh, begin the process of uh, putting together a training schedule for commissioners. Uh, and, uh, you know, between the holidays and working to bring on uh, Commissioner Mates as our newest member, um, now that we are a full contingent of uh, the five of us, uh, I feel like I agree that it's time for us to, um, you know, go over that um, schedule and really um, be able to find a time um, for us to begin that process. And so um, I just wanted to, you know, kind of jumpstart that conversation. So if there are uh, thoughts um, about that, um, that any commissioner wants to share, I don't know if we want to just for folks who don't have it, maybe we could just go ahead and read over what we had, was it proposed for us? Um, I sent that out to everybody today. I don't know if everybody had a chance to um, see that email or not, but I can just go over briefly. Uh, the general concept that we had um, come up with was it was going to uh, kind of cover nine um, kind of key areas. One is uh, the overview of the police training requirements, uh, kind of what they get in their basic course and, and as well as their in-service and some of the requirements as part of the accreditation process, things that, you know, Lieutenant Bonds just talked about, uh, going over procedural justice um, and what is trained, um, you know, uh, for our officers and 
um, implicit bias for us, uh, professional communications, uh, the fundamentals of crisis intervention, uh, use of force, uh, the duty to intervene um, and kind of what that is and, and how that works for our police departments, decision-making, uh, and then the use of force investigations. And so those are kind of, that was the, the nine component course um, that Lieutenant Bonds has put together for us. Uh, again, some of them um, you know, are presented in person. Some of them can be virtual. Um, you know, with uh, COVID, definitely, um, you know, the in-person has been complicated. So we'll, we'll try to do as much as we can, um, you know, uh, online, but some of it may have to be in person, depending on which type. Uh, and uh, I think what we had discussed um, before um, kind of the holiday time period was, um, you know, trying to break this up into pieces. I think uh, Mike's proposal um, was about 28 hours. Um, worth of training. And so I think we as commissioners um, all have full-time jobs um, and are, have other duties and responsibilities. And so we recognize um, trying to do that uh, even in a, a couple of day period would be a challenge. Um, but uh, I think what's important for us to do is to kind of get a kind of a set schedule um, in place. And I don't know about everyone else, but you know, one of the things that worked pretty well for us um, was to be able to um, maybe have the um, uh, the every other Wednesday concept from our police commission, maybe having that four to 6 p.m. time period that, you know, we held that special meeting last month. We could have that, you know, if we meet on the second Wednesday of every month, we could then have these trainings on the fourth Wednesday of every month. Um, so we kind of have that twice a month meeting. And it also would allow us to also cover any other special police commission business that comes up if we have anything that kind of overruns, uh, we could do the training and then also take care of any additional business. I thought, I don't know, would that work as an idea for folks? Um, it works for me. Um, yeah, it works for me. Could you repeat the proposal? Move the meeting to which which one? Which? Um, I think it would be if, if I, I think Jet, currently um, uh, we, we could maybe have this scheduled for like the, uh, you know, the, the fourth Wednesday of every month, um, we would have a training meeting um, from four to 6 p.m. I think that that was my proposal. Okay, until we're done, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, Steve, is gonna be, you're talking nine or 10 sessions minimum, Yeah. right? They look yeah. like they average about three hours a piece. So it would basically take us, you know, the rest of the year meeting um, twice a month uh, to be able to get through the, the, the training session there. And does it still start at four? Would we still start at four or later in the evening? I'm pretty flexible, um, depending on um, whether we could do like a, a, a starting at four, I could also start at three. I'm really, it really depends on other people's schedules, I, I'm, you know, we can, I'm open to suggestions. Four o'clock works for me. Well, I would, just on account of my work schedule, I would um, request five o'clock. I'm sorry if that's too late, but. That's fine. I'm fine with five. Okay. I might suggest we use, try to do two additional Wednesdays though, to try to knock some of these things out. If we're only going to do Wednesdays, maybe try to get the regular meeting and maybe two additional Wednesdays. And that way, if people, because you, you can't miss. So if we only allot one, say you say the fourth Wednesday, what happens if a commissioner is, for some reason, has a conflict? So it might make more sense to try to particularly since we've been putting this thing off is to try to, it doesn't have to be a Wednesday, try to get two additional sessions, you know, a month, at least six hours worth of training a month. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, uh, one of the, depending on my schedule um, and his ab ability to um, kind of do that for us, the one benefit of if we're able to move some of these uh, virtually um, in this format for us, 
um, we can record these. Um, and then if there is a commissioner at one point that isn't available that night, um, they would be able to then go back and at least watch the training. Um, and then as new commissioners come on, we would then be able to have them watch the not the series of, you know, nine weeks of training. Um, and again, if, if we're able to get, you know, two trainings a month done, um, I'm, I'm fine with that too. And, and we'll, um, I'll work with Mike and the chief uh, to see if we can get that training schedule set and we'll email that to everybody. And um, we could try to shoot for, um, you know, beginning in March, if that's, if, if that works with Mike's schedule, but we'll, um, we'll try to make sure to, um, I'll, I'll, I'll let everybody know how we make out with that. Sounds good. Thank you. Great. Um, so that's uh, what I had for um, uh, kind of new business. Did anyone have any other new business items? Um, well, just the letter that we got in today, we were talking about creating a social media for the Facebook. Is the chief going to put together a potential policy of how the department can handle that? Because I just think we should have some sort of written policy um, where I would like to see that we keep it everything on that site positive. So we're not going to, he, he's using the site to disseminate information to the community that the police department deems appropriate. Um, I just don't, for me anyway, I don't think there's, there's a place for anybody to post any negative comments on there. I'd like to see some policy written around that. And so it takes the guesswork out of what, you know, it doesn't put the onus on any individual officer to, de to determine what should be removed and what shouldn't. And we should have some sort of written stated policy. Yeah, and I think I, I agree um, that you know having um, a more detailed policy. Um, we have a pretty we have a pretty generic kind of code of conduct for people that use the Facebook page, kind of from the public side. But I, I agree that I think if we, I'm sure that there are police departments that have done some pretty you know extensive social media um, you know policy related documents that we would be able to look at uh, to be able to you know get some good examples from. And so I'm definitely supportive of that and, you know, would ask the chief to see, um, you know, what's out there um, related to other jurisdictions and how they manage social media. It's been, as we all know, it's a really great tool, um, but it can also be a very dangerous place, um, you know, and again, it's really, for me, the biggest issue is also monitoring it and, you know, the capacity of our, um, you know, our department, you know, whether it's KPD Facebook page or the public Facebook page. But unfortunately, some people can just be really mean to each other. Um, and we don't want to create these hostile environments. And if we're not watching it well, um, it can lead to people feeling harassed or threatened. And that's definitely not what we want. And um, so I, I think Correct. that, yep. um, you know, Minya, yep. Yeah, and the other issue too is, is what this appears is what, and what this particular um, complaint, Amy's complaint brought up was that what it, it, it was it intentional on your part and not um, for whoever's monitoring the page at the time is with a uh, comment uh, like that removed, but then there's comments that remain that are very sometimes extremely um, racist or um, disparaging to other community members, but there's, you know, when there's somebody just trying to, what they might see as constructive criticism or comment that doesn't seem maybe as incendiary as the other, it tends to come off as really imbalanced and, and can appear extremely biased. And if you want to improve community um, relationships, that's a place to start is to try to find a better way to manage those comments and what might not seem um, bias to you guys might seem quite offensive to other people and it, it, it's going to create um, more problems if there's an imbalance in who gets and who gets to keep their comments so that's just my part of my two cents in that yeah, yeah no I that's good does any other commissioners have any other thoughts on that but um, I think that that could definitely be a, a policy that we work on and if any commissioners end up seeing any policies yourselves out there um, please feel free to share it and we can kind of, we can, we can do some homework too, just not put it all on the chief uh, and Mike to do, so. Okay. Great. And so um, today we're going to be going into uh, executive se this session to discuss uh, the complaint that we received earlier, uh, as well as uh, to uh, interview for a potential hire um, uh, 
related to um, the department and, and also talk about um, that issue in executive session. So, yes, Commissioner Dejan. And one quick thing I wanted to say is just, um, there was a couple of um, issues I wanted to bring up and I had discussed with the chief before just about um, some issues with um, the non-standardized process of hiring throughout the state. I recognize that we've got two people waiting right now for us um, in executive session. So I would like to just put that forward for the next meeting um, just to discuss um, the lack of standardization in hiring and um, that specific topic. Just to throw it out there. Sure. Yep, that could be a good agenda item for the future. Okay. All right, so uh, I'll ask for a motion to uh, enter into executive session. So move. Thank you, Brad. Uh, uh, Commissioner Dejanet, uh seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, uh, and I also, I don't know if Tony Davis uh, or Alderman is available um, or interested in uh, joining us, but you're more than happy to join us in executive session. Alderman and again, Davis. we may have, um, Alderman Rita Worthington join us as well. Just for a so I make a motion that we invite Rita Worthington and Anthony Davis into executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay. Thank you all. Um, and we'll see you in executive session in a little bit. Thank okay. you.